Hi everyone, it's Nicole here. So glad to be back today talking to you about creating your own product line and how to know whether or not you've actually got a good formula in front of you. You know, when you are working with Pilot Label Labs or even custom formulators or cosmetic chemists, it's very easy to get caught up in the formulas that you're being presented from a texture point of view. It might feel really good, it might smell good, you might um, have some immediate hydration that can be interpreted as, you know, a product being able to really deliver results. But, you know, one of the concerns that I'm often getting asked about and asked to address um, here on IGTV and other uh, video formats is really um, how do you know that you've got a good formula in your hands? And as a provider, whether you're a physician or a social media influencer or an esthetician um, or anyone out there really looking to create your own skincare line, if it's something that you're going to put your name on and that you're going to stand behind in terms of efficacy, you really can't afford to take the risk that you've got you know, formulas that might say, oh yeah, there's vitamin C or glycolic acid or there's retin-A in here, um, but you don't really know that works. And unfortunately, with a lot of the labs out there and a lot of the formulators, they don't provide um, clinical results with the final formula on live skin. They might show you ingredient data or some quick before and afters, but it's hard to get really solid clinical results. So I want to try to provide you with some really good ingredient guidelines that you can use when it comes to selecting your formulas and um, looking at what's going in them so that you can put your name on formulas that deliver and it can help you really suss out the differences between what's great out there, what's good and what's not so great. So I'm going to start um, giving reviews on all kinds of ingredients, but um, today I'm just gonna talk about um, alpha hydroxy acids and uh, with the most important one, of course, being glycolic acid. Sorry, I just have um, some notes here. So. One of the things in, in dermatology as well as um, research and cosmetic formulations for uh, cosmeceutical products and for us being in the aesthetic space is um, how an ingredient or a product is really researched and how do we know that it's good. So Dr. Albert Kligman is a dermatologist that um, you know he unfortunately passed away in 2010, um, but he spent most of his uh, postgraduate career in dermatological research on different things. He's actually the co-founder of Retin-A. So Retin-A exists because of him and one of his partners. And um, because of all of his research, he gave us a few parameters to follow when it comes to evaluating whether or not an ingredient works um, in a formula for skin. So the first one was, you know, is there a mechanism of action? When we look at an ingredient, you know, is there a mechanism that we can show that's working? Or is it something that's kind of just sitting on the surface of skin and doing nothing? Uh, the second parameter was, does it penetrate skin? And the third parameter that Dr. Kligman really encouraged cosmetic formulators and dermatology companies making products to consider when launching products with active ingredients is, you know, is there a result in live skin? Is there biological proof that um, this ingredient is working? And so from there, many physicians have kind of taken this on as their criteria when evaluating um, whether an ingredient works or not. And because of those criteria, there are very few what we call like quote unquote clinically proven formulas or clinically proven ingredients that have strong data behind them. And so we have um, glycolic acid is one of them. Vitamin C has been well studied by Dr. Pinella and carried on by SkinCeuticals. Um, some of the antioxidants like green tea and resveratrol have good um, research behind them for skin. There's been a lot of investment made in um, proteins and cytokines, growth factors and peptides in terms of being um, proven ingredients. So those are the ingredients that I'm gonna focus on for these ingredient reviews and share with you the parameters um, that you can follow to know that um, if you are being presented formulas with these inside, whether or not they'll be good for you and uh, something good enough to try to put your name on. So. For glycolic acid, it's been around for a long time and there are many people out there who say, you know what, this is old news, it's been around forever, but there's a reason it's been around forever and that's because it works. And you know, some of the earlier publications on glycolic acid were published in the late 70s and the early 80s in terms of efficacy for skin, but the science hasn't changed. So it's been proven actually um, by doctors Yu and Van Scott, and these are actually the guys that found in Neostrata, um, that if you use glycolic acid in specific concentrations, you will get different results in skin. So for example, if you use um, a daily dose of 10% glycolic acid, it's been proven that you're going to see an increase in cell turnover. 
if you use a daily dose of anywhere from 12 to 15 percent glycolic acid it's actually been proven that you have an increase in collagen deposits in your skin so elasticity and firmness and density of your skin are improved and if you use it every day in a 20 percent concentration um, you'll actually see a reversal in basal cell atypia these are abnormal basal cells that eventually can turn into skin cancer basal cell carcinoma so daily use of 20 percent glycolic acid actually has that therapeutic effect to preserve the skin health for the long term um, but for it to be effective in skin like I said not only does it have to be available in these concentrations but it has to be available in its free acid form so um, a lot of times what will happen because glycolic acid is a very small molecule it can penetrate skin well it also causes irritation so some formulators like to put maybe 5 or 10 or 15 percent in a formula um, but they think that it's too aggressive and they like to maybe neutralize some of it and that's called buffering so when you neutralize some of the acid to make it less irritating you also take away the efficacy so if you have maybe 10 percent acid in a formula but they buffer it uh, buffered acid might only leave maybe two percent that's active so if you're using 10 percent expecting cell turnover and you're only getting two percent then you don't really have the efficacy so if you guys are out there looking to private label your formulas and you're looking at throwing in some glycolic acid please know that it needs to be free acid so challenge your formulators to make sure that it's not buffered and if it is that the the free available acid in the formula um, will be within you know anywhere from eight or ten to fifteen to twenty percent depending on what you're looking to achieve with your formula and also um, you know making sure challenge them to make sure it's stable in the formula and see if they have any um, final formula tests that they've done um, in their particular lab chances are they haven't but um, if not I can give you guidance on how to do some of that in your own clinic so I'm hoping that this helps the next uh, review that I do will be on vitamin C and I will continue to provide you with some of these ingredient reviews. So as I mentioned before, when it gets into using clinically proven formulas um, versus maybe some others, you know what you're getting into and it saves you the expense of having to do these studies. You know, uh, some of the other questions I get where, you know, a lot of you out there love clean beauty, you like natural ingredients, you love using your botanicals, and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, the reason that they may not necessarily be considered a, a proven ingredient is that, first of all, doing these level of studies are hard. They take a lot of time and um, they take, you know, a dedicated team, but they're also very, very expensive to complete. And that's why you only see a handful of ingredients that have been studied either by very large success skincare brands or companies or very large um, successful pharmaceutical companies that have the funding and the sales to really bring that to life um, and so that's why not everybody does it so the best advice that I give if you're looking um, to create your own skincare line or if you're in the mid stages of creating it and you find yourself struggling between oh hey do I use these ingredients that are more synthetic and they're more active but they get the result or do I go in the more natural botanical um, my suggestion is to do both you know you're going to have a mix of clients a lot of your clients are going to want the things that are clinically proven they're going to want um you know the results and the effects and they want them to come fast and then you're going to have others that want something that's more natural and there's no reason why you can't blend the two personally for me i blend them all the time i use um, a stem cell product in the morning followed by a face oil and then a mineral sunscreen. And so I get really fantastic results from those things. Um, and I think most of your clients would enjoy that too. So I hope that you found this video helpful next week. As I said, I'll be posting some more and this can get you ready to go with um, your private label. If you have any questions, send a DM and wishing you a fantastic day.